Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this second of a gathering together to kind of see where we have been and where we're going as a parish. Once again, uh, Sister Therese, Deacon John and Father Mario, whom you all know. Uh, last week, somebody uh, raised a question, and I guess I would start with that, uh, as to the finances of St. Mary's at this point. To be honest with you, we're doing fairly well, thanks to the fact that we've had a couple of uh, parishioners who have generously contributed uh, larger sums to keeping uh, things going. Obviously, we're losing money because we're not able to pass the regular uh, basket each week that we do for the loose change. But I do really thank all of those uh, who, of uh, our parish, who continue to mail in their uh, checks on a regular basis. It really is helping us meet the, the needs that we have here, and I can only encourage us uh, to do that. And if you're not on the list to receive uh, envelopes, uh, please do give us a call or write us a note and let us know. I'd be glad, obviously, be very glad to add you to that. So financially, we're n not as well as we could be, and we hope that it would improve, but understandably, we're not uh, terribly uh, in the red at this point. We obviously have continuing expenses. We have a school that we need to uh, support yet for the teachers who are, as you know, uh, teaching our young people on a regular uh, basis. And uh, we also have uh, the uh, cemetery and its, uh, its, its needs. But otherwise, we're not too bad in that regard. The second point that I'd like to make before we kind of open this up for further discussion is some have asked about the mass intentions. Now, the masses that were scheduled for the last month were uh, <clears throat> not celebrated because often when we list a mass intention, it is with the hopes or with the understanding that some member of the family would be there for that mass or perhaps someone who uh, asked that mass to be said would be there. Now, with that in mind, if there are those of you who are interested in having a mass said for someone and are not feeling the need uh, to be there, that is physically, obviously can't uh, as situations are, we would be willing to celebrate those masses uh, and, uh, and that intent. So what I would ask you to do is to send uh, the name of the person <coughs> that the mass would be uh, offered for uh, your name as the person uh, asking that it be uh, celebrated uh, along with the appropriate stipend. And um, <clears throat> also just a word that you understand, you, uh, we will be celebrating it, you'll see it as it is uh, visualized, but we'll not be able to be here. So again, send the name of the person who you are that are wanting that mass to be celebrated and uh, we will li list it now that I can guarantee the day you would like it see so you would like it on May 10th I can't guarantee that but if you, as they tell you when you do these kind of things give me your first choice your second choice and your third choice then maybe we can certainly arrange that so don't say May 10th uh, morning, afternoon, and evening. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but it would be three uh, different days. If there's any problem with that, do, or what I'm trying to say here, do give me a call. So we would certainly be glad, Father Mario and I, to offer those mass intentions uh, for those who are uh, asking. And you can also have a mass celebrated for someone who is not deceased, for someone perhaps in your family who is uh, suffering some illness, or perhaps you just want to have a mass said for them on their birthday. What a wonderful thought that might be. So do tell me <laughs> whether the person is living or <laughs> deceased. That does help in our understanding. Uh, otherwise, we have a tendency to make everyone deceased, and you don't want that. 
So those were two things that uh, have been asked, and I, I hope that that might uh, clarify uh, things a little bit. So I'll let uh, Sister uh, have a few words here. Well, my topic for, um, for this afternoon is faith formation. Uh, we've had many students saying, gee, I, I won't see my teacher again, or a catechist saying I'm kind of disheartened because I didn't really get to close the year with our students. So we will give you some messages from some of our catechists. But before I do that, I don't know if Deacon John or Father Mario have anything they want to say, because I don't want to take up too much of the time. So if there's anything you would like to say before I begin this. Um... Yeah, I have nothing to say other than um, this is like last time. If you have a question, go ahead and send it in. And as soon as we get it, we'll read the question and try to answer it the best we can. Yeah, the same thing with me. Uh, we're just grateful for those people who are following with us, uh, watching our live masses every day mm -hmm. and weekend masses. So those people who are watching are not only our parishioners, and we're glad to serve them. So I hope and pray that through this kind of situation, we continue to reach out to them through our prayers. And to our parishioners, we assured of our constant prayer, Father Paul and Sister Teresa Deacon Chan, we're praying for you every day. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the one thing that we can give for you this time of the year. And we continue to hope that this kind of situation will come to an end soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before Sister gets into her program, I didn't realize she had a program set up here on me. Um, as you know, we have uh, ordered two booklets for each day of the Easter season. Now, the, this one called Easter to Pentecost is available online. You can, each page is there. But, here's my, my plug. If you would like one of these booklets, we have loads of them here, I would be glad to mail them to you. Um, there are two of them. Each are different with different uh, reflections and prayers. So you're more than welcome, even if you're not a member of St. Mary's, you're more than welcome to have these because they're dated and given a few another month they will <coughs> still be good but not in the same way so if you would like uh, copies of these please just send uh, uh, your name uh, to St. Mary's here uh, tell me what you're looking for, that you would like these and I'll be glad to mail those on to you I, I did want to mention that while while I was thinking of that okay. yep. and actually if um you're around my neighborhood, for those who know where I live. Uh, you'll know you can find some of these books at the end of my driveway. I've been putting them out for a few days when it's not raining. Uh, I'm the guy where you walk by the house and the dogs will greet you, but there's some books out front there. Okay, so I'm gonna begin with a family program, which meets um, once a month on a Sunday, where we all go to mass together and celebrate family and, and also have catechesis on all levels. And the person who works with me on the program is Don Gerasi. And Don Gerasi wrote a little message to all the family program people, but also beyond, also to the whole community. And so I will read that to you now. And she says, I am thinking about all of our families and family program. I hope you and all in our community are staying safe and healthy. A friend of mine who has been struggling with a few issues texted me this week with a picture of a mug I gave her that reads, give it to God. She told me in her text, I gave my struggles to God and everything has been better. Issues are not all solved, but I am doing better. God is good. And now Dawn continues her message. With today's current situation, people having different struggles, loss of a job, <clears throat> loss of loved ones, adapting to new schedules, homeschooling, feeling isolated. More than ever, it is a time for us to remember we are not alone. I feel an inner peace after I let go and give it to God. May you do the same. Peace be with you. Don Jirasi. And that is from Don. And if anybody would like to respond to Don or to anybody in the family program, you can just write a message and Father Mario or Jen will 
let us know what you're saying to us. Okay. And the next message is from our fourth grade family program catechist, Lisa Giancarlo, and that'll be read by Deacon. Here. Her writing is from Miss Lisa to my fourth grade family religion class. Hi, kiddos. I hope you're all doing well and keeping busy during this extra time at home. I know you're doing lots of schoolwork and helping at home. It's been a really long time since we've been able to get together, however. I hope that you have kept up on learning about the power of prayer and how it can relax you. Remember how Sister Therese began each family program session with a guided meditation this year? This might be something for you to try at home with your family, maybe after lunch or after dinner. Taking the time to relax your mind and body is very important. It would make me happy if, while you are at home, would make a prayer wall or a prayer bucket. Each day you could pick something or someone to pray for and either put it on your wall or in your special prayer bucket that you've created. When we're able to see each other, probably in the fall, we can share all these beautiful things you prayed for during this time that we are apart. She finishes with, I hope you and your families are safe and doing well. Actually, there's one question that came in. There, someone's asking if you know how to give haircuts, Father. That's. Is that some implication that I need one? <laughs> no, no. That someone else needs one, and they'd like for you to give him one. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a, a, a variety of bowls I put the different sizes on and clip around. <laughs> Be careful, Father. <laughs> Be careful, person who's asking. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. He's going to get it. <laughs> um, our next message, which I'm going to read, I'm going to ask Father Mario to read the one from, from Gene Anderson. But the next one is actually a very short one. We have Carol Castle, who teaches third grade, and her daughter, daughters, Melissa and Nicole, who teach second grade. And they actually sent a picture. And I think, is it readable, Jen? Is it, can you read that message? Yes. Okay, so you can read that message from them as they have on their placards there. And uh, the note from them says, we didn't have much time to put together a video since Melissa, Nicole, and I are working, teaching full time from home. It has certainly been a learning experience about having faith in our abilities and being flexible. Thank you to all of St. Mary's staff and that have been continuing with daily mass. God bless and we pray we will be able to come back to, ch to the church building soon. I miss the Eucharist. Sincerely, Carol, Melissa, and Nicole Castle. I think that they're together with many others who miss, who miss coming to our building <clears throat> and miss mass. And now? Father Malia, would you read the one from Jean? Jean Anderson is our fifth grade teacher, fifth, actually fifth and sixth. Yeah, I think she also tried to make a video for the kids and send it to, to your sister, but she said, I don't think it went through. So she said, if it didn't, uh, please let them know that I miss them and hope to see everyone next year. I think it's a long wait. I hope soon, not next <laughs> year. Next year yeah. We're still in April, but... Yeah. <laughs> Also, I want uh, them to pray all for all of those affected in this pandemic. Yes, we are praying together with that. And she said, I hope everyone stays healthy, and I look forward to seeing you in September. Again, it's the long wait. The Hopefully, long wait, yeah. may, may or June. I hope so. I hope so. so. Well, it's, yeah, we are looking forward to see each other again, but maybe, hopefully, not next year or September. Yeah. Hopefully, soon. So we have to pray. Yeah. yeah. So, Jean you're out there which I think you are I don't the video wouldn't open so I don't know if it got here if it didn't get here but um, we'll have to kind of work on that I guess to, to work on this video and how to do it yeah they can watch the message in a, if they're watching live now so mm -hmm. it's in the screen the messages the pictures that you sent to us so all those great things are also can be seen in the screen okay yeah okay and um, now to our Saturday morning sessions uh, we have our kindergarten teacher, Allison Rebelis, 
And you'll note in a um, little discussion, Allison is um, a nurse in the ER right now. Uh, so we'll see what she has to say to us. Paul, would you, would you read that one to us? Or? Tough when I have to read things. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, I would like to give a shout out to my kindergarten religion class. Jack, Nicholas, Jacob, Anna, Alina, Kali. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I have been praying for each of you and every one of you. I wish we were able to have more classes together, but God had other plans. Since our last class together, I have been working hard on the front lines with my fellow healthcare workers. It's amazing the teamwork and com camaraderie that the staff and providers of the ER at Mercy Hospital in Buffalo and throughout the Catholic Health System have shown. Many of our patients have been very sick, but with our care and compassion, many of our patients went on to make full recovery. Please continue to pray for all of the frontline essential workers during this time. We need your prayers more than ever. And if you're bored at home, I could suggest making a get well card for our patients, since they're not allowed to have visitors at this time. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. And more importantly, hug your loved, loved ones a little tighter. God bless, Miss Allison. I think for us, that puts a, a face to um, the essential workers and the frontline workers that one of our own, who is one of our teachers, is, um, is there. Okay. Um, well, I, I like her suggestion of uh, making cards or something for the patients. Um, I would say do that or write the letter. Father Paul asked people to write letters last week. I don't know if anybody wrote an actual letter. I actually but, got one. Did you? I got one. I, yes. I think maybe uh, anyone who's listening, we can write a letter or make a card and just send it to any nursing home. Yeah. Or That's if right. you want, send it here and I'll make sure it gets to one of the nursing homes. And make it out to just to a friend and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting it to them. And yeah, so we salute to those who are frontliners and raise that your our prayers. And we are so proud of you and thank you for your service to the people, especially for those who are sick in the hospital. And of course, you should have to stay healthy and strong also. So thank you so much for your, your service. I also did, although I want to interrupt again a little bit, to remind uh, our parishioners that we do have a wonderful school here and that the school is uh, going on. The teachers are teaching uh, the young people class each day, as I know is happening in the other schools throughout the area. But uh, we're planning to have a summer camp program here at St. Mary's, hopefully that the situation will allow that to take place. And um, that would run from seven o'clock in the morning to 6 p.m. for those who might be uh, interested and there is a registration fee of $50 but it's per family and not per child so if you had two or three uh, children they would all be included under that but they would be asking that uh, so for the sake of planning that uh, they could know by February or February by May 15th so that's a couple weeks away you do not have to be part of the school to be part of that program, so that might be something that some of you might be, uh, or you could pass that on. Those, <laughs> I suspect some of you are more my age watching, and so you're not immediately um, thinking of that. Well, maybe you'd like the summer camp program, I don't know. Um, the other thing that the school is uh, running, the we have what's called the STREAM program, which is uh, done in many of the schools, public as well as Catholic, and they are having a plant sale. Now, looking out this afternoon, it's, thank goodness, uh, raining, so we have the good soft ground for planting, and uh, they have a variety of different plants for $5 a plant, not too bad, 
And you can find details of that on, the, um, on our website, okay? I don't have all the details right here. But again, the date for getting your plant order in, May 1st, Friday, this week, which is also First Friday, for those of you who uh, are of that tradition. Sorry, Sister, to have to That's make okay. all these well, announcements. <laughs> but then again, that's where we're here for. But can they find information about that summer program on, on a school website, or where would they yes, get details? Yes, on the school website. And if you go on our website, then it put you will know there's an arrow takes you to school, and that would give you the information there. And if they don't have it there, you call me and let me know, and I'll get on their case right away. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really so tough. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read now the uh, first grade teacher uh, message to you, and then I'm going to ask Father Mario to read the one from Roseanne Fallhaber okay. after that, and then from Nancy Friedman. So, um, and then we have um, right here with us Jen, who will give her little video. So these will be from the primary grades from Saturday morning. Uh, Nancy Revelis is the mother of um, Allison and probably is praying constantly for the safety of her daughter as, um, as are we. So here's from Nancy, our first grade teacher. Dear students, I really enjoy being your religion teacher this year. I just wish it could have been possible to have a few more classes together. I am so proud of each of you for learning your prayers. Please say your prayers every day for everyone who is sick. That way, you will know them very well when you get to second grade. I miss all your smiling faces, but I know you are happy and safe with mom and dad. Have a wonderful summer. I look forward to seeing you in the fall, no longer as your teacher, but as someone who remembers you and prays for you. I miss your smiling faces. I'm sure that you've been great helpers at home. Please keep praying to God daily. Maybe you and your family can have a circle prayer time at home. I pray for good health and happiness for you and your families. God bless you and your families. Love, Mrs. Nancy. And so Nancy, we are with you in your prayers for your daughter and um, I know your students miss you too. And now from um, this is Roseanne. Yeah, uh, but for the, the Nancy, it's a very good recommendation, prayers, and you know, I, I actually miss the kids too. It's great that every time I go to school, and it's just to bring joy so much to me when I see them, yeah. you know, with a joyful face, baby face like me, and just kidding. Uh, yeah, they were, we miss all of them, and all we can do is like what Nancy is saying, just keep on praying and just keep smiling. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Father Mario, I think that uh, Father Paul misses the high fives too from Sarah That's Dimari. right, I it's think so. true. I miss that one too, after mass here, high five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially if we have school mass in here, mm -hmm. and after I waited over here, and then all the kids were just having a high five, oh, I missed this thing. So, well, we will get back soon, so we just keep on praying, uh, and just stay healthy at home, enjoy with your family. And now, Ms. Roseanne, we won a ticket from the first uh, early bird draw, something. So thank you again to Roseanne, who is very generous to share the gift, the winning ticket number. And here we go. Uh, this is her message. Hey, my great little boys and girls, I miss you so much. Please remember that you are loved by God and by me. I sent two pictures to show you, so it will be in the screen. Uh, one of myself and my husband. I also wanted to share the new addition to our family. Her name is Holly Rose, and she is five months old. Oh, wow, what a joy. And then she continued to say, please remember to light your candle and prayer with your prayer book every day. Your staff friends are waiting to go home to your house soon, I hope. Love to all of you. So, Ms. Roseanne, thank you for your great message. We appreciate your uh, message to us and for the kids. You know, those stuffed, those stuffed animals. Mrs. Roseanne has a habit of teaching certain prayers to her students. And at the end of the year, they learn all their prayers. 
they get this stuffed animal to take home with them. Mm -hmm. And oh, many nice. of her students have already earned them, but they're still in the waiting, for, waiting in school till all the children learn. So she's got them for you, and as soon as she sees you, I'm sure she'll, she'll give them to you. You know, I see Mrs. Roseanne often on my path to work, I pass her home, and I see her or Roger, her husband, walking that dog. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So I do, I do get to see her, Holly Rose, often. Yeah, that's the one thing that I have to clarify. Holly Rose is not a baby. Mm -hmm. She's a dog. A dog, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have a letter from Nancy Friedman. To my second grade students, I feel badly that I never got to say goodbye to you. Nicholas, Dominic, Andrew, Avery, Summer, Noah, Lucas, and Lily, please remember to say your prayers each night before sleep, including the act of contrition. Also watch the Mass each week on television so that you will be ready for our First Communion when you're in the third grade. God bless you and keep you safe. Have a wonderful summer, Mrs. Friedman. Well, thank you for that wonderful message. I know that you are excited to watch the message of Jennifer Kate. And just for you to know, she is a big help uh, in our daily masses in here, doing live streaming, especially on the weekend. And just a video, but before that, uh, we have a message in here. Hi, everyone watching here from New Zealand. Wow. Where is that? Is it in, in Europe? Yeah. No, no. Proud <laughs> attending Holy Mass officiated by, oh, that's me. And yeah, they follow us, our daily masses in here. So that's a good thing. We are not only, uh, sounds like our church now, the world the is world, our church, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So for doing Mass, thank you, and God bless you more. And can you read the next one, Deacon John? Uh, positives from this COVID event. More quiet time away from our daily businesses. Refocus on family and friends in need. Daily Mass via our PC. Riding the chaff of media, politics, hidden agendas. Turning in, EW, turning in to EWTN and Christian media on radio and television. Scripture reading on a daily basis, like the old Divina, letter writing to folks we seldom see, time to become still and experience the uh, presence in our space, and house cleaning slowly without a press of time, getting back to simplicity away from the madness of the secular society. Shalom. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is that from a parishioner? Well, yes, from a parishioner. <laughs> Well, you know, I always like to give incidental trivia, which will do you well on Jeopardy and things like that. <laughs> but did you know that there is a Saint Corona? Oh, really? Uh, and uh, interest in her has been, of course, widely <laughs> uh, taken place because of the pandemic. Uh, and there are a number of churches in Europe, and particularly in Italy, Austria, and southern Germany uh, dedicated to her. Uh, the remains of Sister Corona, uh, Saint Corona, she was a 16-year-old Christian girl who was martyred for her faith in the second century. And um, she is very much honored in certain parts of northern uh, Italy. The, um, this is all trivia stuff, but you know, there's a real person behind this. The Holy Roman Emperor, Emperor Otto III, in the year, uh, turn of the uh, first millennium, took the relics of Saint Corona and put them in a lead coffin close to the altar at the church in, now I don't know if in call Akon, A-A-C-H-E-N. And it's there today, so people still make pil pilgrimages. So I don't know if this saint is, if she's particularly happy about the fact that she's being honored because yeah. the virus Pandemic. was named after her, but just for your own little, you know, trivia bit to bring up at supper tonight, what do you know about Saint Corona? Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about Corona beer? 
Oh, Father Merrill. <laughs> Corona beer is like a solution to this kind of disease. No, they stopped making it. They stopped making it? They stopped making it. Oh, my it. goodness. I love Corona beer. Well, I'm not promoting uh, Corona beer. I'm just asking if it's like a kind of remedy, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Bring it up. <laughs> So, yeah, yes, thank you for the trivia, Father Paul. That's interesting. I never heard about St. Corona. Huh? See, it's I, worth tuning in just to find out. <laughs> All I know is that the fifth mystery is the coronation of Mary. The corona, coronation. Corona, the coronation, right. Corona, is, oh. what is it, is that, what is that word? Is it the... That's a Latin word. Latin word. word. Crown. Corona. Right, yeah. Crown. I know Corona, but I don't know it's the original word of that. So interesting. So next will be the... Message, video message from Jennifer. Hi to my awesome second graders, Gracelyn, Gia, Maddie, Alex, Andrew C, Andrew L, and Sawyer. I miss you guys all so much. I miss seeing your smiling faces in class, and I am so sad that our time got cut short this year. But I want you guys to know that you're always in my thoughts and prayers, always. Speaking of prayers, I still have our prayer board with me, and I even still have some of your prayers that you guys had on here from the last time we met. So I want you to know that I will continue to pray your prayers for you, for Grayson's family, for Alex's dog, for Gia's cat in heaven. I will always pray for you guys. But it's even more important that you guys pray at home, whether that be with your mom or dad or loved one, or even by yourself. God is always there to listen, and he always wants to hear from you. He'll always answer your prayers as well. So especially during this time, keep praying. I also want to say happy birthday to all of my March birthdays, woo, and even my July birthdays. I know we were supposed to have a cupcake party, but I wanted to wish you guys a happy birthday, and I hope you had and will have a blessed one. So until I get to see you guys, always remember about our saint. I also hope that you guys took your projects home and talked to your mom and dad about your faith family tree. But always remember what St. Padre Pio said. Pray, hope, and don't worry. Everything will get better soon, and God will always take care of us. Can't wait to see you guys. Bye! Go ahead. That's our, that is our animated uh, producer over here and director of these of these live streaming sessions. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jen, and for yeah. your animated message. Yeah, thank you. It's a uh, powerful message. Pray, hope, and don't worry. That's originally from Padre Pio. We can also change that line, right? Don't worry, just pray, and continue to hope. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful message. Thank you, Jennifer. OK, thank you. So I think that's about, uh, about all. But I would be remiss if I did not pass on the words of my own sister, who is one of our teachers here, Miss uh, Joan Woods. I would hear about it if I didn't, so here's what <laughs> she has to say. Shout out to Mackenzie, Sean, Olivia, Joseph, Julia, Emily, Jan, and Ella. You too, she says. I miss Saturday mornings together with you and the learning we did about our faith. I miss our circle of time when we said our prayers. Perhaps circle time could happen in your own home these days with your parents, sisters, and brothers. You could pray as we did for special intentions, like what we did when we were together. I miss each of you. Well, we miss each of you. We're glad and very happy that you joined with us today. And again, if you have any questions or uh, issues that you would like us to uh, talk about and, and, and answer. We didn't get too many today, mm -hmm. but uh, we would certainly be glad to do that. Again, on behalf of Sister Deacon no, and... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just want to make sure that Chandler and Kristen and Peyton and Jessica know that we know we didn't get to you today because we ran out of time. But uh, next week when we tune, tune in again, we will hear the messages sent by our third and fourth grade catechists and aides. And also, maybe if we could get messages from the students back, that would mm -hmm. be really That's nice. Right. That would be Just fun. tell us what you're doing at home and are you doing the circles and the buckets. Uh, so please give us some material for next week. We'll do the student, the teachers that we missed, but also the, um, uh, hopefully, some of the students. Okay, Father, I'm sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> That's it.
Okay. Yeah, uh, we thank you for those who are viewing with us today. Uh, someone is watching from Italy, from Canada, uh, somewhere around here in Buffalo. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, anything else? No. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you Bye. all.